Whenever the name France is mentioned, all across the globe, we all know that France happens to be one of the most African-loving countries. France has always been there for Africa, helping Africa to massage and manage our economic resources, especially that of the Central African region. Hmm, am I correct? Today, I'm dancing to the most handsome, capable African nations, Adonly pumping a physical one of them. And as usual, to present this presentation with me, I have beside me my most chocolatey, superlicious, lovinous baby girl. Good day, everyone. Yeah, I'm Jacquette Tolu and it's Setro, and it's a pleasure having you today. Ah, but this that my husband is saying, you know, on this platform, I am the defender of the global citizens. And my citizens out there are saying, what are you actually saying that some persons are really defending us as in managing our resources very well? And you, this your clientele stuff. Have you really, really? My clientele are always in charge. They are always on point. They know where we have all the minerals, mineral resources in Africa. So they don't want our, our government to be disturbed in managerial operation operandum. So they are helping us to manage and garnish these resources. And that is where you need to cut it out, France. France. <laughs> this is your, your clientele, yeah. your, 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 your clientele. Yeah. Uh, is that how you call them? Yeah. They, they've really, really done lots of good to, to run here. I want to follow your word. Yeah. But there is a young African lady of recent that just came out and face your main clientele from France. I just don't want to mention our uh, names. And this young, brave, intelligent, articulate, outstanding African lady just came out with all smiles and all wisdom and just face your real clientele. I think it is no secret that the current relationship between Africa and France is complicated. And in order for us to build a relationship that addresses issues that affect not only Africa, not only France, but the globe, then it's important for us to interrogate this very complicated relationship and ask ourselves three things. One, what is not efficient? Two, what is not ethical? Three, where do we see integrity gaps? And to be able to do these three things, we're going to have to be brutally honest. The history of colonization is understandably very important. For Africa, it's a path that is as painful as it is destructive. And the effects of colonization can still be felt to date. And I'm not just saying economically, but even on an interpersonal level. We, as Africans, feel the pain of colonization every single day. Now, the lack of a clear and strong acknowledgement of the continent's pain on this destructive past results in skepticism. And the absence of actions that will further push the acknowledgement is also a major issue in the current France and Africa relationship. In fact, the air of denial that France chooses to sit in is uncomfortable, not only for Africa, but also for France. And it does no good for either one of us. How can you trust the source of your pain when the source doesn't acknowledge it? What we end up with is skepticism on what exactly does France stand for. And so we ask you, Mr. President, how strong can a relationship that is built on pain, that is built on skepticism, and that is built on lack of trust really be? We, not just as a team here, but all of us in this room, and the 5,000 who helped with the report, and the millions more on the continent and off of the continent, want a commitment from you, Mr. President, that you will join us in the eradication of La France Afrique, 
which is a very unfair dominance, and it has to end. <laughs> Furthermore, the breakdown in understanding what France fully stands for is fueled by the continued collaborations that France has with agencies, leaders, and individuals who have glaring integrity issues, whilst on the other hand, claiming to be standing for human rights. So on one hand, <laughs> so on one hand, we have France that is entrenched in issues around racism, around exploitative dominance, and whilst on the other hand, they're still claiming to teach others about democracy. These are two These are two profiles that one cannot fill at the same time. And when you try to do that, we find it rather arrogant. What it creates is a cognitive dissonance, which is that discomfort you feel because of these two conflicting values. It not only doesn't make sense, it is unsustainable, it births a negative perception, and an ambiguity in knowing once again what values does France stand for? Now it is very clear, I mean, because we are all here, that the current relationship is imbalanced. It's not collaborative, and in, in some instances, it's exploitative. We have social impact solutions built without any input from relevant African um, civil society organizations who are a resource when it comes to really understanding problems on the ground and creating solutions that run efficiently. And they are a resource that Africa is willing to lend to France. Let's also not forget that whilst we in this room are here because we want to change and repair this relationship, there are some who are benefiting from this current dysfunctional relationship, be it private businesses from France on the continent, with non-ethical practices or corrupt individuals and groups from both France and Africa. This group and the lack of a very loud and public condemnation of this obviously fuels skepticism. So this honest interrogation is a very important first step because the strengths and weaknesses of this current relationship will dictate the success or failure of our collective future relationships. But we are not only telling you what's not working. <laughs> we are very solution-driven, which is much unlike the heads of states that you're used to meeting. <laughs> we know exactly what you need to commit to today and we have a clear path on how we can achieve that. She um, came out because I wasn't there. If I was there, I would have faced her. How can you be talking to my client, tell her like that? They don't, the children of nowadays, they don't have respect. Okay. Even, even when we are taking your, your resources and using it to the betterment of the whole population of people, you should have no right to talk to us like that. These young ladies call the state, they say, they said, how can you say this relationship that is between, between, or how do you want me to say it? Between, between, between. Be <laughs> I thought I between. <laughs> that is between France and Africa. It was during a youth summit between uh, Africa and France youth summit. The lady had to say, this relationship between us and your clientele is such a pain, mm -hmm. skepticism, mm -hmm. and once again, lack of trust. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, your clientele that are involved in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it racism, is it exploitative dominance, and on the same hand, they are holding that on one hand, and on the other hand, they are holding democracy and money Do you know what? They are two mutually exclusive events. The occurrence of one automatically negates the occurrence of the other. You can't be having words. Uh, as part of your characteristics, exploitative. Having words. 
Exploitation. I've been what? Objection. Let me tell you. You see, it is very hard to please Africans. It is very hard to please you people. China is also helping you people. People are still complaining. France is also now coming today now to say they are helping you people. They even brought out your youth. They are all, okay, come and speak English. Oh, the way you used to speak all the English, all this why. Come and speak the English again. Now you people, only for you to just be talking directly. Can you talk directly to your president like that? You are talking directly to us. That, sorry, to my clientele. I was also feeling as if I'm part of them because they, they pay me for consultation. You know, and, and, and you, you're talking that uh, exploitative. What is exploitative? That they made a mistake. It's not exploitative. We call it exploration. <laughs> you come to your country to explore. <laughs> Why are you laughing? We are only sorry. Okay, since they are my client, I'm representing my client in this rural court of injustice. They come to your continent to help you to explore what you have refused to. Explode. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is the situation that is called estorandongia. Estorandongia is a process in which what you are supposed to use for your benefit, we use it to do for our own benefit. What they call it in Yoruba is <laughs> the name of that is that the child that will say the truth to you should understand. Okay. Uh, as in, uh, I think just listening to this young lady, I'm satisfied. Why are you be comparing me to this young lady? Let me tell you, I graduated from one of the most outstanding universities in Africa that is not recognized. Please, sorry. Cancel, when you are editing, remove that not. <laughs> I wanted to say that it's not recognized in France, but it's recognized in Africa. So that does not mean that it's just because the lady is just very, very lucky that I wasn't there. I would have given it to her back to back. How oh, dare you? Because I'm a learned motwa. How <laughs> oh, dare you? Okay, viewers out there, please let me just have your comment in the comment section below. I've been listening to this, my wonderful, unique lady. Uh, I, I think the joy and the hope of Africa is coming alive because we're seeing young Africans coming alive and saying, oh, yeah, 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 we know actually what is happening. The young Africans, the young Africans are coming out and we're seeing what is happening with our mind ties, with our back ties, with our stomach ties, with our leg ties, with our all eyes. I can say the That's body. why you people are not developing because you have eyes in your stomach, in your back eyes. But we, the people of France, a Francais, voila, explorer. We use only these physical high to carry out research, get the resources, take them to where it is needed. Because these people, you see, most of the time, these resources, if they leave it for you Africans, it can start exploding. So it's better the explorando it and, you know. Oh, you keep it to yourself. So I'm joining uh, this young lady. Before you join the lost young lady, let me just tell you, everybody. Most of the time, you beautiful African youth, you come out in good, good English like this. But let me tell you, the people that will make the law, the people that will sign the contract, the people that will make sure that this continues to go my clientele's way, they don't speak too much English. They are in the 80 now, collecting nine perforated 80, eating chewing gum and pepper soup. And they are going to be the ones to sign in a mutual way. <laughs> hey, but, but you know what? I'm not bugged, I'm not moved, I'm not patched up mm -hmm. because uh, we're getting there. Right now, uh, it's part of what I stand for as a female African. I already have this platform and we have this platform already helping young Africans to, to make sure that they grow their skills and they come out there so that we're not just a continent of, of work, of oh, importers. Okay and of talkers, but we are an exporting continent. We are a continent of doers. And how can you export if you don't produce? How can you do when you don't have resources? But we are already doing. So you can join us. You please watch uh, some of our own content. That's why we, the searchers, well, we don't just like to talk about things or say a negative thing. We, we want to walk the talk by doing words, making sure that we Africans, we start producing. And that's why we're picking up the less privileged youths from the streets, from the gutters, from the ghettos, from the shanties. Watch our blogs. It's not just the words of the mouth. We have started picking up this youth. We are training them on different crafts, in organizing, in upholstery, 
in texturing, in photography, in videography, in different types, styling and different crafts. And I, think, I think one aspect that uh, young Africans need to start focusing on is good that you are making, uh, you know, you are making uh, agitations or is it agitations? You are making your mind get known to these people that you feel that might be the one that can provide you with the enabling environment. But let me tell you, don't wait for no work, nobody. Do start doing is the right right time is the right time now for African youth to start empowering each other. African youth need to stop uh, just talking and ranting about what is wrong, what is not right. It is time for African youth to now start being the doer. Whatever you see that is wrong, you now start doing the good part so that that can be leveraged for others to follow the trend. And remember, you can't change the world. Somebody said, I tried changing the world. I couldn't change it. Try changing my country. I couldn't. My state. I couldn't. My uh, local government area. I couldn't. My family. I couldn't. Then I, I started. I said, let me change myself. I changed myself. I was a changed person. The change affected my family members, affected my local government area, affected my state, my nation. And that's what we at Cetra's foundation are about. We have a foundation empowering the African youth, helping them learn different skills, marketing their skills, and making them come out of their shell so that they can be great people in life and they can take up the leadership position in the next, nearest future that is just now. And that so if you have any youth around you that you feel wants to be something, wants to be um, productive in life, in any part of the African uh, country, Kindly reach out to us. Let's engage them to see in what way we can come in to support them. Okay. In that time, we start doing. And not just talking. So you can watch some of the youth to be empowered and how they're doing right now. And that's it. Remember the joy therapy. Whatever is going on, we promise that we'll always come to you. Bring the report on a lighter mood. You laugh over it. Remember, your joy is your strength. And your strength is your life. And without light, there is nothing you can do. Don't die of high blood pressure. And joy is medicinal. Take two teaspoons of joy in the morning, two at night, and in the afternoon, you can always take three because the sun can reduce it three to two. <laughs> so at the end of the day, look for your spouse to hold, hold her like a transformer, holding <laughs> the wires. And you know what you have? You have what we call the swelling to work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just it on a lighter mood. Remember, whatever you're going through, we've had people gone through worse situations. And we, the Tetras, are here. Just remember, there's a couple in the world that are interested in you. Just reach out to us. Oh, till we come, you wait. Next time, we remain the Tetras and catch you. Love you. Bye bye. You may like to watch this video or this. Mm -hmm.